We know that the quantity and quality of hackers is accelerating and increasing around the world. Hackers are infiltrating our country, your homes, our families, and into our personal lives. And they're winning, unfortunately. We know that cybercrime is an increasing and accelerating problem in this world. We estimate today that it's a multi-trillion dollar industry. The FBI and the Internet Crime Complaint Center show that there are reports of multiple billions of dollars of funds stolen every year. If you look at this chart, it has tripled, more than tripled, in just four years. If this was my personal stock performance, I'd be very happy. And unfortunately, that's not what that is. It's the stock performance of the criminals of the world. We know that cyber warfare is a real thing. We know that it's increasing and accelerating around the world. We know that countries such as Russia and China, North Korea, Iran, Syria, among many others, frankly including the United States, are hacking around the world and causing wars. President Obama, not that many years ago, executed an order to launch the Stuxnet virus. The world attributes Iran's delay in receiving nuclear weapons and accomplishing that feat to the Stuxnet virus, not that many years ago. Recently, President Trump ordered a cyber offensive attack against Iran in retaliation for the United States military drone being shot down near Iran. We know that cyber war is a real thing and it's increasing. We know that cyber bullying is a problem in schools, really everywhere in the world, but especially for our youth. The Pew Research Center came out with some stats recently. 59% of today's teens have experienced some form of cyberbullying. That may include offensive name calling, spreading false rumors, receiving explicit images you didn't ask for, or having your own images being used against you. Physical threats as well. This is an increasing and accelerating problem. Now what do hackers, cybercrime, cyber warfare, and cyberbullying all have in common? Many things, frankly. From my perspective, I see an increase and in an accelerating number of villains in this world. And therefore, we need more heroes. I believe that people who choose the path of cybersecurity in their life, choose to play defense, choose a career path and a calling of helping stop the hackers of the world, I believe those people are heroes. Today's version of real heroes. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary has four definition of a, uh, definitions of a hero. Now, we all want to be the first two, right? Legendary figures and illustrious warriors. But frankly, I believe that those who choose to go into cybersecurity are people who should be admired for achievements and their noble qualities, for having great courage. You, too, can choose this path. I have found that most people believe that 
Cybersecurity is all about having a more expensive and better firewall, or having more expensive and better software, or that hackers got to get in via some super complicated attack. In reality, 95% of the time, when you hear about a data breach, it's because a single person, somewhere in a company or in a home, did the basics of cyber hygiene incorrectly. Things such as using the same password for multiple accounts, having a password of password, not using multi-factor authentication. Literally, when I talk to people in the cybersecurity space, and I was just at a presentation this week where a thought leader in the cybersecurity space said that 95% of data breaches that we hear about in the news today can be stopped if more people do the basics well. And it's not that hard. The cybersecurity industry, one of the, thing that, one of the things that really frustrates me about the industry is they believe that people like you are not capable of changing behavior. And they just assume that you won't. And therefore, massive, massive amounts of money are being spent on hardware, software, and others. I disagree. I believe that people like you can learn these things and can choose to realize that these are important to implement into your personal life, as well as into your professional life. I was in Hong Kong in April of 2019. Now this year we've heard a lot about the protests in Hong Kong. There's a lot going on there. And frankly, right now it's the center of today's cyber war. The people of Hong Kong used to feel safe. They used to believe they were in a democratic part of the world. Today, they hide their faces when they're out protesting. They wrap their cell phones in tinfoil to reduce the chances of their devices being tracked to them. They cover their cameras on their phones and computers. They use encrypted messaging. And they're teaching people how to do the same. These people, frankly, are today's heroes. One of those people in particular, who I met when I was there, his name is not Max to protect his identity. Max and I were talking about what does he do? And he talked about how he's teaching people how to use encrypted messaging, tools like WhatsApp and Telegram. He was teaching people how to use VPNs, which is frankly illegal to use in China. He was teaching people to cover their cameras, using concepts like Faraday cages, wrapping your phones in tinfoil, using backpacks that have special protection in them to help be safe. I have a friend. Her name is not Anne. She's worried about what the American government will think of her. She is worried about what other people in America will think of her. She lives in America. Some of her beliefs are against what many people today believe and frankly hate that people like her believe. We talked about how to protect uh, what you believe on social media. We talked about encrypted messaging, using secure email, the importance of having password management. And she is teaching others how to protect many things that are important to them. I met somebody recently. Her name is not Tori. I went to her home. She was concerned that her ex-boyfriend had infiltrated her technology devices at home. And she felt that he was an abusive person. And she was concerned about the data flow in her home and the privacy of her router, her laptop, her phones. When I showed up, there was tape over all the cameras. She had a lockbox of technology devices. She wanted to learn about encrypted messaging, two-factor authentication, password management, 
and most importantly, how to turn off where your personal data flows. Most people don't realize on your phone you may have hundreds of apps that are tracking your location, that have access to your contacts, that have access to all of your text messages. Did you know that text messaging is an unencrypted platform and it's not hard to download your text messages? may make you think twice about what you choose to message people. I believe that Max, Anne, and Tori are heroes. They are people who should be admired for doing the little things right and well to help stop whether it's bullies, criminals, slow down the impacts of war. They are making a big impact in their circle of influence, not only for themselves, but for their friends, their family, the country, and the organizations they work for. You too can be a hero by doing the little things well. If you choose to take this path and to learn the basics, I and many others will see you as a hero as well. You can do this by simply Googling how to be a hero and learn cybersecurity and stop hackers. You could email your favorite tech person right now and say, you know what, I'm ready to step up and learn the basics of personal cyber hygiene. I'm confident the people in the cybersecurity space and the IT space would love to help you because everybody in this space is passionate about this topic and wants to stop the hackers of the world. And if you choose this path, I want to say thank you. Because not only are you helping your personal future, you're helping your entire circle of influence. The people that you choose to text, the people that you choose to email, the organizations that you work for, the compounding impact positive impact in this world by you choosing to implement the basics of cybersecurity well will help ensure that we live a safe and happy life into the future. Thank you very much.